How's it going, everyone? Joey here, and I'm joined by Easy Allies Michael Damiani because we are talking about Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. We played three hours of this game, and let me just say right off the bat, I enjoyed just about every second of this preview. I was shocked at how much I enjoyed it. I already knew the game was going to be good, right? But when I played it, uh, by the time the demo ended, I did not want it to stop. Did you feel similar in any way? Yes, I think I even remarked to the person with me, like the, the, the Ubisoft rep that, man, it's gonna stink that I'm gonna have to like start this back over again because I was having such a good time and it's like, you know, three, four hours in, I'm like, this is good, it's good stuff. And yeah, I guess, I mean, it's not gonna be that bad going through it again. So it was, I was very surprised. It looked good in the trailers, but it plays very well. I didn't get to play that first demo uh, some of the other guys at Easy Allies got to check it out. They were, you know, praising it. Just echo what you said, man. It was, you know, good stuff what I was playing for sure. That said, I have never even played a Prince of Persia game in my life. But the, I remember okay. the first trailer that dropped during Summer Game Fest, I immediately fell in love with this game. Just from playing it to it feels good, it looks good visually. And if, as somebody, because we talked about this before we uh, rolled the rolled the feed, um, you've pretty much played a lot of Prince of Persia games. Like, you're more well-versed in it than I am. Like, how did it feel going into this knowing, like, this is the first new Prince of Persia game. The remake is nowhere to be seen. How'd you feel? Yeah, uh, I'm just happy we were getting something. When they first announced this, I was just shocked because of all the reports coming about coming out about the original Sands of Time remake, and you know that was you know had a troubled development history. Who knows if it was really gonna ever see the light of day? It wasn't looking good for Prince of Persia, and I know Ubisoft had moved on. Like they had the Assassin's Creed series, which kind of like the natural evolution of those gameplay mechanics, and then adding an open world but it felt like there still could be a place for Prince of Persia to come back. And it was nice to see this because this is, as you, if you haven't seen this before, this is a more Metroidvania style structure for a game, which you're, you know, you're saying the magic word for me. Like, I mm -hmm. love that. And we were talking about how well it plays. I would say the most analogous thing I like, you know, came to mind after playing it for like maybe 30 minutes to an hour was it was starting to feel a little bit like Metroid Dread, like, you know, control structure, even like the, the the visuals like this is, you know, that that's to some people like me, that's kind of high praise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it very much feels like it's definitely taken inspiration from Metroid Dread, which I was thinking in my head, like, wait, how long has this game been in development for? Because Metroid Dread didn't come out like that long ago. But it, it, it's also just really good to see Ubisoft, like, take a creative risk like this. Like, I feel like these past few years, Ubisoft has mainly stuck to their, you know, their signature Ubisoft formula open world games, there's towers like to synchronize the maps and stuff. Even the new Avatar game that just came out basically looks like Far Cry, but set in the Avatar yeah. universe. But here we're getting to the team, uh, Ubisoft, I forget how to pronounce the name, Montpellier, or some, something French like that, known for iconic titles such as Rayman Legends and A Valiant Hearts. And those are just, those are 2D games and it's great to see them just go back to kind of that style like prince of persia originated as a 2d game even though it wasn't a metroidvania so this kind of feels like it is going back to its roots but also being modern at the same time with those metroidvania aspects yeah i definitely agree and you hit like nail on the head that like this did start off as a 2d series so it's sort of just going you know back to its roots and you're right not everything really needs to go into like the full open world 3d like, it, there is a place for these side-scrolling 2D action-adventure games, and I'm very glad that they're giving Prince of Persia another shot at this, and I think it's primed to succeed, and if the rest of the game was as good as what I played at the preview event, then hopefully, you know, the word of mouth will get around, the reviews will show, reflect that, and hopefully that this game will get, you know, a fair shake and lead to maybe more installments like this because I, I, I would happily take, you know, more games like this. There's been a lot of Metroidvanias, but I will always take more Metroidvanias. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So just to kind of like lay down the premise of this game, you don't play as the Prince of Persia in here. You play yeah. as Sargon, I believe his name is. He is one of the seven warriors called the Immortals. And there is a Prince of Persia in this game. His name is Hassan. And what I find interesting is he's not the warrior type that we've seen in the previous yeah. games. He's he's more diplomatic. He's very much like royalty. I'm glad he's not like depicted as like a spoiled brat or anything. He's very much like he uses his words more than anything. And at this time, he gets kidnapped. And now it's up to Sargon and the rest of the immortals to rescue him from this place called the Old Citadel. And this being a Prince of Persia game. 
there's time elements in here. And what I like about the story so far is how they play around with, like, how time flows differently in this place. Um, you occasionally run into your comrades and they're just like, I've been searching for this prince for, like, three days. And then Sargon's like, but it's been, like, two hours. And that already plays into some into some interesting story mechanics and just just seeing that these team members interact with each other i i don't know how they did it but i already like them a lot like i don't know how you feel about these characters so far but they it's clear they have a history they got along with each other very well save for like two people in this demo oh who like the first three hours who've already their 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 uh their legions have been sort of in question like whose side are you on that sort of deal very interesting i'm glad to see like the story is already quite interesting even though it's not like the main hook i still like that they're taking this sort of route did you have any like thoughts about this story about about like even like the prince's role in this demo yeah um i i I mean i was glad that you know they are putting a good focus on the prince but they are not the main hero star of the game but they are a primary character the story still is you know focused on them and i agree with you like the characters sporting cast like the immortals they have that rooftop scene shortly after like the tutorial sequence where you kind of you know not really i mean it's more bonding with them but mm-hmm. like you're as the player you're getting your first introduction to you know what these characters are really like because you just saw them on the battlefield now we're sitting down we're reflecting you're kind of seeing, like, you know, as you said, where allegiances lie. And then as you are on uh, the Citadel and Mount Kof, you are, you know, encountering them under, you know, stressful circumstances. And you're seeing, you know, you know their true colors. And I, I, I think it was enough to keep me intrigued. The time stuff, you know, the mystery behind it. You know, they drop a lot of things in that three-hour demo um, that make you scratch your head and go, hmm, what's going on here? And, but it's not overbearing. That was the best part. It was enough to keep me in, interested, but not so much that I felt it was being dragged out. And in a Metroidvania especially, I really don't like when story overpowers the experience. I want just enough to keep me hooked but uh, and, and keep me on like my motivations understood. But yeah, I don't want like, you know, a Last of Us or, mm-hmm. uh, a, 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 you know, a, a something that's super story driven like that. I like the gameplay, I like the exploration, I like the combat, and that is what this was delivering on. Absolutely, and it helps like what little story bits there are. Like it's it's being it's being told through some really well animated cutscenes. Like the animation in this game, in both gameplay and cutscenes, is just superb. It's spectacular, and the voice the vocal performances are also great as well. So I'm glad like for what little story there is, it's it's given like a great amount of attention to it. But like you said, the combat and the gameplay is where like this game really succeeds at. Like you said earlier, if the rest of this game is as good as the first three hours, this game's gonna be like an easy 10 out of 10 to me. It was addicting the combat getting into those into those encounters. Just and I've died so many times too. This game is very difficult. But I didn't get frustrated because like that just means, oh, I have to do combat again. This is really fun. The one the one particular boss I got really frustrated by, other than the other than the flying mythical creature, I forgot the name of it. I think I Manticore? died more times. Yeah, the Manticore. Okay, Manticore. Right. And but the the first one was the giant with the like the big huge pillar throwing stuff mm-hmm. at, like mm-hmm. swinging it at you. Oh, that thing destroyed me. I was like, I'm, I'm feeling embarrassed right now. The Ubisoft rep is over my shoulders. Like, like I don't know what they're thinking because it's on Discord, and I'm just like, I need to get past this, man. I need to do it, and it is very satisfying to like finish those bosses off kind of in the sense like you f- you feel the relief playing like a dark souls game where the bosses are really difficult even though the gameplay is completely different from those kinds of games it's difficult but it's fair it's not overly punishing it's all about learning attack patterns similar to metroid dread mm-hmm. and i i love it for that i really do yeah i i agree it, you, yeah calling it out metroid dread it felt just like those boss fights where you probably gonna lose a few times, but it does feel very easy to pick up because it's it's patterns. You just got to see the patterns. You just gonna learn the timings, and you're good. And they aren't even like too like um, like effects heavy. Like I know even like in like Souls games, sometimes bosses are giant. You can't see everything. You can't see the full animation or the the arena trips you up. This is very straightforward. And the bosses do keep you know evolving with their like they have multiple phases. They will get more aggressive. Um, I, like especially like 
the the mana core the the when i finally beat it uh i was like oh just a few more hits i have full health and you know i almost still died i was like whoa <laughs> i just need to get like two more hits i was like whoo okay let's, let's let's be a little patient here like don't get too greedy but the same thing with that boss that giant with the the big like pillar thing it was swinging around um i got cocky with that and in souls like fashion when you die you do go back to your spawn these trees called the walk walk trees and you have to make your way back and enemies will respawn when you go and interact with those trees or you die so it is you know traversing back getting there and then redoing the fight the it wasn't you know getting through the enemies you can just run by them it's so easy mm -hmm. but yeah i just wanted to get back there get back into it and yeah same thing like i kept losing because i was just like really making dumb mistakes like i <laughs> really found out how to like kind of like uh, best it i was like oh man i got this pattern down but i would like just swing one too many times and it would like it's so fast with his attack patterns one extra swing too many he'll catch you in that swing or whatever it does so much damage i was like all right i just i like just told myself i said stop one these how they you do this many swings stop this many swings stop and like i was like saying it out loud and like <laughs> did it and the rep was like there you go he goes you were getting like a little greedy there weren't you i was like yeah he's like you came so close you kept dying at near the end i'm like yeah that's me <laughs> <laughs> I like I like when they're near dead i'm like let's go let's go all in and kill this guy and it's like that they know that they know you're going for that and you know they're they're high octane they're intense they uh they you it's not frustrating it's something as i said you're going to want to come back and man like i got this i will get this and you know the mana core they said was like they're going to be like the hardest one mm -hmm. and yeah it, it's a long drawn out fight um my rep gave me a hint though on my <laughs> second try um which i kind of was already going to do I, I won't repeat it but mm -hmm. when they said that hint about a, a, a like a thing i should maybe try and have you heard what I was talking about being aggressive? Maybe you have like a clue. Uh, I did that and like I was able to kill it on my second try. Oh, but nice. we were, I don't know what difficult, like we, one thing to throw in real quick. Sorry, the difficulties. Right. I was very impressed that there were four difficulties. We, I, sorry, I played on the default one. They recommended the default one. So I, I did played too. on that. But they have a custom difficulty that lets you adjust all the sliders for like all like health, like a bunch of different things that if you really don't like any of the four difficulties, you can make your own custom difficulty. Wow. So that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. I did not notice that. That is really cool. Yeah. And I know we're throwing out comparisons of Dark Souls and Metroid Dread, but by and large, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown feels like its own game at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, there's it blade, it's mainly blade combat. You do get a bow and arrow, but ammo on that's extremely limited, at least like from from the beginning. I'm sure you can upgrade that later through the shops in this game. I struggle really to compare it to anything else, and that's granted. I haven't played yeah. too many like 2D action like uh, hack and slash games, but it still very much feels like its own thing. There's the attack button. There's a parry button with the left trigger, and some enemies' attacks can't be parried. You have to dodge them with a dodge slide. Uh, I can go on on the mechanics but basically it feels like its own thing i even str i say like yeah there's a parry button like sekiro or something but it still very much feels different from sekiro mm -hmm. from yeah. it's just a simple fact that it's on a 2d plane it, it makes it unique and i would also add into that the the uniqueness and the identity of this game beyond just like you know the 2d sword combat is the, the platforming like a lot of metroidvania is like yeah metroid has platforming but this is like there are stretches of pretty intense platforming, precision platforming, and you don't generally see that in this type of game. You see them in a more of a pure platformer game. Like you might see that in like a Mario or Rayman or you know a Celeste or something. I mean, I don't think anything in here was as difficult as Celeste, but it starts skewing towards that direction where you're dodging like spinning spike platforms and you know this like spikes on walls and like you have to get through a whole sequence of that. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of a. You know, some of the stuff like I saw, like an Ori, mm -hmm. uh, the Ori games, like it was like more comparable to that. And also like the, the the controls you have when you're platforming, like you have the like wall jumps, you can grab like poles and swing and aim your traje trajectory. Uh, you get like an air dash later. So they, they're, you know, the trailers alluded to other abilities. So they're definitely throwing those all into the mix, not just for combat, but for like traversal as well. Mm -hmm. I love that too. Yeah. And Prince of Persia was kind of like, 
known for that particularly is the platforming. Mm -hmm. Here, it is very much, like you said, sort of a Ori situation, a Celeste situation. I never really found any of them to be as brutal as those games, of course, but when you get that flow going, it's incredibly satisfying. And especially with that air dash, I don't even know if it has like a limit on it like i think it's only once and then you hit the ground you can do it again yeah but like but it's not like there's a cooldown meter for it so you can really oh, yeah. go ham on that air dash feature and going back to the sort of metroidvania aspect of it uh, it also feels like an rpg as well because there are side quests and that will probably make this game run quite a bit long the ubisoft reps told us it's about a 20 to 25 hour game which is, I think, twice as long as Metroid Dread was. I only did one side quest with that giant soldier who tells you, hey, I need, where's my friend? Oh, he's dead? Okay, here's a piece of heart. It's not called a piece of heart. It's a tree petal that you can use to upgrade your health that way. That was the only one I, I tried. I, I came across someone else who gave me a side quest. I just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, Same so I, I, yeah, I came across two. I also I, like I didn't do like the tutorial, th uh, not tutorial. There's a, one of your comrades. You encountered them in like the kind of like the hub area where right. like the the mages that sells you. And there's like a blacksmith and like a forge realm. Um, there's also like your comrade who will give you challenges, but the Ubisoft ref was kind of like, oh, there are a ton of these. This could take up your whole three hours, so you probably <laughs> best to like move along and you know play the game and not spend you know really any time on these. You know you can they're like you know some of them just rehashing the tutorials stuff you saw, but you can come back to this later. And I was like, oh okay. Yeah, I was like three uh, lessons into that because that's another thing I love about this combat system. It is versatile, it is robust. There's a lot you can learn that the game just doesn't outright tell you from the beginning. Like, hey, if you hold down the left stick and you press the attack button square, which what I had playing the PlayStation controller, like you can, you can kick enemies down on the ground. And I'm like, oh, what? Hold up, this didn't tell me that. So I was like really trying to learn as much as I could before my rep told me to like move on to because there's just a lot here. And I'm just like, dude, I I'm I know when I get this game, like the final build of it, I'm gonna be just doing as many of those, like maybe even all of them once I get them. Cause I need to learn like the ins and outs of this combat system. Cause it's very, it's not as cut and dry as you might think. There's a lot yeah, to it. Yeah, I did pick up, they were like, you can hold down directions and attacks. Like you can do like launchers in the air. You can do like slams. I think, yeah, when you sprint and you hit like the attack button, you did like a jump kick thing where you would like, knock people over so there was more to it than you know the initial tutorials you're, you're right so i feel bad i didn't get to go through those and see like you know how much depth really is in there but that's for me to see when you know the game comes out and those expert players you know do it on the hardest difficulty show off those killer combos like i can't wait to see some of those you know in action it was always cool to see oh, totally i'm very excited for this game like this after playing this preview this jumped up to my most anticipated game of 2024, which oh, really? is okay. not, not that far away. It's only coming out next month. But yeah, like I'm just immediately excited. Like we said at the beginning, I really wanted to play more of this game when it ended because it was just so fun. It, and that's the key of it all. This game is just absolutely fun in every way. I couldn't really think of any negatives from this preview. Could you think of any? From the trailers though, they do show a lot more uh, advanced abilities um, and powers. And I'm very curious how those will play out um, because I think the most interesting thing I got to see besides boss fights and everything was near the end before the real final fight of the demo. There was a section where there's an enemy you can't actually defend Feet, you can like it's like a stalker type Master enemy. Master hand sort of it, deal. Yeah, like a tyrant, like tyrant from Resident Evil, where when they're alerted to your presence, they will just chase you down relentlessly. And when you're captured, something happens. It's not a game over, but you can't really, you know, you're trying to be stealth and you know use stealth to get around them. Mm -hmm. And I found that kind of like interesting because like one like one sequence, I actually alerted them, but you still have a chance. Like you just gotta like move, you gotta move fast, like go 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 go. And it's like. Reminded me a little bit of like the Emmy sequence going back to Dread. The yes. Emmy sequences, <laughs> we're just trying to run away. It's like that, like panic. Oh God, we're like just anywhere, just any path that's safe. Let's just go, 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 go. Just get me out of this environment. Will they have more moments like that? How will the powers, you know, impact like traversal exploration? And yeah, like can it keep it up for twenty hours? Because this was a good three hours, but like. It's really hard to do a game good for that long. Right. A lot of Metroidvanias, I feel like when they get too long, they wear out their welcome. Even Hollow Knight, which I love to death. I can't, I like 30 hours, like this is 
too long. Like this mm -hmm. need to be like a little shorter, but that's that's me. So I do have a small pause for concern. But as you said, some of that might be due to side quests and more like RPG like elements where they're really going, you know, all out for this. It's not strictly just dragged out environments that feel like they're going on forever. There's like, if you want to do all these side quests and get the full story and what's going on here, you know, you have to put in a few more hours. Maybe it is only like a 15 ish hour game if you just like do, you know, the main story and maybe it's like five, 10 more hours if you do all the side quests, who knows? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and and I, with how challenging this game is, I feel like I'm gonna want to do a lot of them because I need to be as powerful as I possibly can because yeah. the first three hours that Manticore was like the hardest thing. I can't imagine what nightmares await me in hour 15 or something, mm -hmm. can't even imagine. But uh, thank you so much, Michael, for joining mm -hmm. me for this Prince of Persia discuss and tell us where we can find you. Sure, uh, I'm a member of Easy Allies. You can check us out at uh, patreon.com slash easy allies. Or you can catch all of our content on youtube.com slash easy allies or watch us live most of the time each uh, or on most days each week on twitch.tv slash easy allies. Perfect. Yeah. And you can check out his Prince of Persia preview right over there. But I uh, thank you so much again, Michael. And thank you all for watching this preview discussion on Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited for this game? Let me know. And until next time, bye bye.